welcome so so in this lecture we will be moving to the next topic which is virtual memory it is related to the previous topic that is memory management techniques that we have discussed or you can say that it is a continuation of the memory management technique okay so the topics we will be discussing under virtual memory so we can call this as virtual memory management the topic we will be discussing under virtual memory management is so we'll start with the introduction or the background why virtual memory is required and how it will benefit the performance of a computer system and then we'll be discussing a concept called as demand paging which is an extension of paging which we have discussed in the previous uh, chapter or the previous topic memory management technique so this demand paging is the heart of the virtual memory concept okay so this entire chapter actually it depends on demand paging so if you are if you are able to understand demand paging clearly then it means that you understand what is virtual memory okay and also you should be able to understand the difference between paging and demand paging so these are the uh, target of this particular topic okay so if you could clearly differentiate what is paging and what is demand paging how it differs uh, then it means that you have understood this concept okay and then we will be discussing a concept called copy on write okay these are just related to demand paging and then we will be discussing a concept called as page replacement here we will be discussing several page replacement algorithms some 3 4 page replacement algorithms we will be discussing so page replacement is something similar to swapping already we have discussed swapping so swapping in the sense uh, the 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 operating system or the cpu will swap one process out of the main memory and they will and it and it will swap some other process into the main memory so that is called as swap out and swapping so swapping is normally done on the entire process but if you do swapping on a on page on certain page that is called as page replacement okay if you do page wise swapping or if you so page in the sense we use the term page in logical memory but when you come to the actual physical memory it is frames okay but here we are using the term page replacement but actually it refers to the physical memory so so in a given process we will not be swapping the entire process rather we will we may swap out one or two frames okay and then we may swap in one or two other frames or pages so that is called as page replacement and what are the various page replacement algorithm is available and how one is efficient than other these things we'll be discussing under page replacement techniques and then we'll be discussing a concept called as allocation of frames yeah again as we know clearly that the logical memory is divided into set of equal sized partitions which is called as pages whereas the physical memory will also be divided into the same set of equal sized partitions which is called as frames okay so when a new process comes how many frames should be allocated for that and on what basis the frame should be allocated okay when a new process comes say operating system has x amount of empty frames or say 10 empty frames out of this 10 frames how many frames should be allocated for this new process and on what basis it should be allocated that we'll be discussing under the topic allocation of frames and then we'll be discussing a concept called as thrashing so thrashing basically discusses the a limitation of uh, here limitation in the sense i don't mean i am not telling the drawback no so what extent we can go with virtual memory what is the limit of the virtual memory to identify the boundary of virtual memory uh, actually thrashing helps us okay so so basically virtual memory increases the degree of parallelism that is more number of process can be executed simultaneously but to what extent how many process you can have simultaneously 
can you have 10 20 or 30 or what okay so to what extent you can move maybe after 30 process parallelly getting executed if you go for 31 month process the performance may degrade okay but when there is 21 29 process and and 30 process okay from when you move from 29th process to 30th process executing parallelly the performance may improve but beyond 30 if you increase then the performance may degrade okay so so that is that means that is the limit so at this particular situation this system can support 30 process parallelly okay so at what point the performance degrades so that that is called as thrashing okay so what is thrashing all those things uh, we will discuss as the course proceeds so these are the topics we will be discussing and the objective of the course is to explain objective of this chapter is to explain what is virtual memory management system and what are the benefits and why should we use that and then we'll be discussing the concepts like demand paging page replacement al algorithms allocation of page frames and thrashing okay so let us move into the chapter so to start with the introduction to execute any program to execute any program the program should be brought into the main memory until and unless the program is not in the memory the program cannot be executed okay this is known to this is known this is a known fact okay but there is a question should we bring the entire program to main memory or is it enough to bring only a part of the program so if you ask that question actually it is not required to bring the entire program to the main memory whichever the part that is that will be executed at the moment it is enough to bring that part to the main memory okay so the entire virtual memory concept works on this principle that is you don't bring the entire program to the main memory when the when when you are going to execute a program or a process bring only those pages bring only those pages that are going to execute bring only those pages so if you take a typical program the program may contain the actual logic code other than that it may also have some error code error code in the sense error handling code that is if this error occurs do this if this file is not there do this if you are unable to open this socket do this such codes are called as error handling code and also it may have some unusual routines which may not be always executed it may have some routine which will be executed only only 10 percentage of the time when you run the program when you run that particular process most of the time that routine may be ignored or it may not be recurred or sometimes you may be using very large data structures where you not be using the entire data structures so these are some of the examples where 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 the part of the code will not be executed always so in such cases let us not bring that code to the main memory okay why should not we bring that code because 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 that because 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 with 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 partial program also the partially loaded program also can be executed as long as a particular page is not demanded it is not required let us not bring that to the main memory okay by doing that what happens in the sense more and more process can stay at main memory more and more process can stay at main memory and and also it it and also it decreases the constraints or the limitation of the physical memory okay so if you say that uh, the process can be executed even if if it partially available in the memory then what does it mean we need not load the full program if we just load a partial program that is enough so in that case we can load we can load more partial programs we can load many partial programs rather than one full program okay assume the memory capacity is 4 gb assume the memory capacity is 4 gb and we have a process that is that 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 is 2 gb okay we have a process that is 2 gb say you have another process uh, that is also 2 gb say you have three process 
of 2 GB. Okay, so totally 6 GB, all the all the process size put together, it is 6 GB. But the main memory capacity is only 4 GB. But the main memory capacity is only 4 GB. In that case, what happens? You can bring only two process to the main memory. If you are using, if you are if you are loading the full process, okay. But if we load the partial process, say let us say that we are not loading full process. We are we are just loading only 0.5 GB of a process and we are executing. And when other pages are required, then only it will be loaded. In that case, what happens? All the three process can be loaded into the main memory. Process one can be loaded, process two can be loaded, and process three also can be loaded in the main memory and still all these three process uh, will occupy totally only it will occupy only 1.5 gb of memory because we are not loading the full program we are loading only the partial program okay partial process whatever the pages required only that we are loading if some other pages in future required that will be loaded by swapping okay that we will discuss later so only 1.5 gb of 6 gb is used so remaining 4.5 GB is available. Remaining 4.5 GB is available. Say if some other process P4, P5, P6 comes, that can be used by these remaining locations. Okay. So what happens? Say if you load in this remaining 4.5, if you load other process P4. So 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 if you give only 0.5 GB for each process, then in the remaining 4.5 GB, how many processes you can load? In 1.5 GB, we are loading three process. Okay, so in remaining 4.5 GB, uh, you can load nine process. You can load nine processes. Okay, that is that is we can load from uh, P4 to P4 to P13, if I am not wrong. Okay, so totally you can you can you can load nine processes. So totally totally you can load nine plus three. Uh, 12 processes, right? But initially, if you allocate only, if you allocate the full, if you, I mean, if you bring the entire process into the main memory, then you can load only two process, okay? So this is the basic advantage of uh, virtual memory system, okay? So, so the programmer is no longer constrained by the limits of physical memory. In fact, the programmer need not worry about whether sufficient memory is available or not. Programmer feels that as if unlimited memory is available because programmer sees only the virtual memory or the logical memory. Okay. And he starts uh, bringing the process and he starts executing. And it is the job of the operating system to map the logical or the virtual memory with the actual physical memory. Okay. So by virtual memory concept, what happens in the sense CPU utilization will increase and throughput also will increase. At the same time, response time and turnaround time will not decrease. Okay, response time uh, will not increase. Response time and turnaround time will not increase. Response time and turnaround time should not increase. That is our objective. We want to decrease response time. If you decrease response time, it means the program is executing fastly. Similarly, if you decrease turnaround time, it means the program is executing fastly. Whereas CPU utilization and throughput should be maximized. Okay. So with virtual memory, CPU utilization and throughput will increase and response time and turnaround time will not increase, okay? And there is less swapping. If you bring entire process, then, then whenever you want to swap, also you want to swap the entire process, that will take long time. And that will, that will unnecessarily, it will, it will introduce heavy load on the CPU and also it will take long time, whereas now, we are going to swap only few pages or one or two pages, not the entire process. So the swap time will be very less. So these are the advantage of using virtual memory. Okay, fine. So what is virtual memory? So basically virtual memory, again, like how uh, we have discussed previously in segmentation and, the, uh, and paging, virtual memory also separates the logical memory from the physical memory. Virtual memory separates the logical memory from the physical memory. So user feels as if he is having unlimited memory because user or the programmer sees only the logical memory and 
based on the logical memory, they allow the process to be in the memory and, and they start running the process or they start coding. They need not worry about the real physical memory. And it is the job of the memory management unit of the operating system to map the logical memory to the physical memory. Okay. And this logical address space can be very much larger than the physical address space. So user feels that we have very large amount of memory or the user or the programmer feels that we have very large amount of program uh, amount of memory. But in fact, the memory may not be that much. In fact, the actual physical memory will be less compared to the logical address, but the memory management unit will do this mapping and it will identify whether the, whether the requested page is available or not. If it is available, what should be done? If it is not available, what should be done? All those things will be taken care by memory management unit. Okay. So because of that, as the logical address space is very larger, more process can be executed simultaneously. Okay. More process can run concurrently. Okay. We use the term concurrently uh, because, because one process is actually context switching. Okay. Parallel in the sense you have more than one CPUs. So, 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 and the, and the load time or the swapping time of the process will also be less because we are not going to swap the entire process, rather we are going to swap just few pages. What is virtual address space? What is virtual address space? So virtual address space is, is something like a you, uh, programmer's view of the memory. So the programmer here view the memory as a, as a contiguous location. Programmer views the memory as a contiguous mem location starting from location zero. One, two, three, like that, okay. With respect to the programmer, the pages will be stored in, a, in contiguous locations. If this is page one, uh, then this will be page two and, and this will be page three and this will be page four and so on and so forth, okay. But that may not be the case in the physical memory. Okay, this is similar to what we have already discussed. In the physical memory, the page one, maybe, uh, so in the physical, physical memory also divided into frames, okay, of equal size frames, okay. So the page one of the physical memory may come, may come in frame three, okay. Whereas page one of the physical memory is in uh, page zero and page two need not immediately follow here. Page two may be in uh, frame one, okay. And page four and page three, sorry, page three may be in uh, uh, frame zero, okay. And page four uh, may be in frame four, okay. So like that, the real uh, pages, really the particular uh, pages may not be stored in a contiguous way, uh, but but in the virtual address space, the user feels or the programmer feels that they are stored in contiguous address uh, locations starting from zero until the end of the virtual address space. Okay, and and it is the job of the memory management unit to map the logical address into physical address. Okay, so the physical in physical memory, the memory is organized into page frames. That that is. Uh, that we know already that is similar to whatever we have discussed in paging concept. Okay. Right. Now, how virtual memory is implemented? Yeah, this is important. Virtual memory is implemented through the techniques called demand paging and demand segmentation. So here we'll be discussing only about demand paging. So in the last chapter, we have discussed paging. What is paging? We have discussed. Okay. So the only difference between paging and demand paging is the basic concept is same. That is in paging and demand paging, we have logical memory and we have physical memory. Logical memory is divided into set of equal sized pages and the physical memory is divided into set of equal sized frames, okay? But with paging, what happens in the sense, whenever a process is loaded, loaded, the entire process will be loaded. That is all its pages will be loaded into the logical memory and obviously it will also be loaded into the physical memory okay but demand paging with demand paging what happens in the sense initially we will not load the entire process into the main memory we will load only few pages say say a particular process contains 100 pages 
say a particular process contains 100 pages p1 to p100 okay so you won't load all the 100 pages you won't load all the 100 pages rather i may load only the first four pages p1 p2 p3 and p4 and and that will be loaded continuously in the logical memory but in the physical memory it may be uh, it may be scattered somewhere else okay so initially the operating system will execute only these pages unless and otherwise other pages were not demanded okay so cpu will create the logical address and that logical address will be converted to physical address and then it will check whether the page is available or not if it is available it will execute if it is not available then what should be done so that will be discussing in the course as the course proceeds okay so the key takeaway is demand paging is similar to paging the only difference is with paging the entire process whatever the page it occupies if if the entire process occupies 50 pages all the 50 pages will be loaded into uh, the logical memory and the virtual memory at the same time okay whereas with respect to in the logical uh, whereas with respect to demand paging the page will be loaded into the main memory only when it is demanded as long as it is not demanded it will not be loaded fine so this diagram uh, will clearly explain how virtual memory and physical memory were related so this is the virtual memory so this is how the user or the programmer views the memory the memory starts at location 0 and and it continues up to the end of the virtual address space or logical address space and there are pages were loaded into the virtual or the logical address space conti continuously like page 0 page 1 page 2 so on and so forth then we have this memory management unit this memory map is nothing but mmu memory management unit so the memory management unit what it does it maps the logical address or the physical uh, logical address or the virtual address to the physical address okay so here whatever may be the page 0 it may be coming here page 1 may be coming here so the point is that virtual memory will be contiguous whereas physical memory will not be contiguous okay so it will not load all the pages it will load some of the pages okay if a page is not if, if if cpu is requesting for a page that is not available in the physical memory then that will be retrieved from the disk this is hard disk this is hard disk okay so it is not that all pages will be loaded at a time no first only some few pages will be loaded maybe some for a particular process some 10 pages may be loaded or seven pages may be loaded these seven pages will execute and when other pages were demanded then it will be loaded okay so so this is the brief view of uh, virtual memory so you can see the physical memory size is less uh, when compared to the virtual memory okay so so the programmer feels that uh, we have a huge amount of memory but that may not be the fact and 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 the programmer need not worry about really how much memory is available so how much memory should be allocated all these things programmer can ignore he can assume as if uh, we have a very huge amount of memory and and he can just concentrate on his uh, code on his part okay and then it is the job of the memory management unit to map the actual uh, virtual address with the uh, physical address so this is so so this is the view of the virtual address space for a single process okay so the in the virtual memory there may be more than one process maybe page 0 to page 10 may correspond to process 1 some other after that some other process may page 11 to page 20 may correspond to process 2 okay like that it, it is not that virtual memory will contain only one process it may have multiple process okay so this next diagram this diagram shows for a single process for a for one particular process say for particular process p1 for this particular process Uh, how the virtual memory virtual address space looks like okay for this process also as we discussed we will not load all the pages to the memory at a time only a part of the pages will be loaded still still how that part of the pages looks like so that it will have a stack it will have a heap it will have the data part and it will have the code part okay so this is something previously we have discussed but that is with respect to the main memory okay that is whenever a process is loaded into the memory 
it will have code section, data section, stack section. Okay, but that is with respect to the physical memory. This is with respect to the virtual memory, right? So, so maybe here stack may contain some pages, three or four pages. Okay, heap may contain some pages, some two, three pages. Data, data segment may contain some three or four pages. Code segment may contain some, some number of pages. Okay, like that. Okay, so this is this is the virtual address space of one particular process. Okay. What is what is what is stack, what is stack and what is heap? Heap is used for dynamic memory allocation. During the program execution, if new memory was allocated, that new memory will be uh, will be will be allocated from the heap memory. Okay. So heap is used for dynamic memory allocation. For example, in C, dynamic memory allocation is done using malloc and C a lock. Okay, so so it means initially uh, the process uh, uh, needs only some x amount of memory, but during execution it may needs some more amount of memory, which is x plus delta. So that delta amount of new memory that is dynamically allocated, so that will be allocated by the uh, from the heap section. Okay. Similarly, so what this diagram shows in the sense heap may grow upward. So here the starting address is this. So initially, if for heap, say say this is hundred, from heap say hundred to twenty is allocated. During execution time, if more memory is required, required, uh, then it may increase. Okay, heap will grow upwards. So if some more memory is allocated, it may go up to one thirty, right? And similarly, stack will grow downwards. Stack is mainly used for storing temporary values and for using function call and function return. So if there are more number of function calls than it is expected, say this initially some, some stack space is away, uh, allocated. So this is max location. This is max location. Let us assume max location is 1000. Okay. So basically memory, it is numbered from bottom zero to, so let us assume 900 to 1000 was initially allocated for stack. But say this location is this, this amount of address space is not sufficient, is, is, is not getting sufficient. So some more uh, stack location is required. So then stack may also grow. So say some 50 locations extra needed, then stack will grow, but stack will grow downwards and heap will grow upwards. Okay. But this is not the actual physical address. This is the virtual address space for one particular process, how it will look like. Okay, that's what uh, this diagram shows, right? And, and another thing is that uh, the virtual memory uh, also, so this is called as whole. Initially, this is called as whole. Okay. So if if uh, if if heap and stack does not grows, then obviously this memory will not be required. So it will not be allocated. So initially it is not allocated. Okay. Initially these pages will not be brought into the main memory. Only the pages corresponding to the minimum stack, minimum heap, data, and the code will be brought into the main memory. So depending on whether the heap or stack grows then the respective pages will be brought into the main memory. So this part, which is between uh, the, the part of the virtual address memory or virtual address space between stack and heap, this part is called as holes. This part, this, uh, this part is called as holes, okay? So, so the virtual address space with holes is called as sparse address space. The virtual address space with holes. If a virtual address space contains holes, then that is called a sparse address space. Okay, that is called a sparse address space. Right? Virtual address space with holes is called a sparse address space. Okay, and, and virtual address space is also helps us to uh, share the libraries, share the system libraries, and also memory can be shared for process communication. So what does it mean? It means that, say for example, there are two processes, P1 and P2. We're using the virtual address space, okay? And both of these processes were referring to a library. Say, say, say the library is stdio.h. Say both these processes referring to the same library, stdio.h. Then, then you need, you don't want two copies of stdio.h. One copy of stdio.h is enough. So only one copy of stdio.h will be uh, brought into the main memory. Okay. So this is main memory. This is this is the main memory or the physical memory. Okay. 
at the right the left side and the right side whatever is shown uh, that is the virtual address space uh, for the respective process p0 p1 and p2 okay now both of these process are referring to the uh, uh, stdio.h which is a library so so you need not require two copies uh, one copy is enough it is enough to have only one copy in the library and both the process can uh, can share this so that concept is called as shared library using virtual memory so it's not only stdio.h any library so any library files can be shared like this so this is also one of the advantage of virtual memory or virtual address space similarly memory can be shared for process communication also right so so this is the introduction or the uh, background of of virtual memory and virtual address space let us stop here and uh, let us discuss the other things in the next lecture thank you